To this day, almost exactly 100 years after his dramatic story unfolded, Balto remains one of history's most famous dogs. The 1995 children's animated film named after the titular dog introduced a new generation of people to the story of this heroic canine. Though, at the time, most children watching the movie likely didn't even realize it was actually inspired by a true story. In 1925, a deadly epidemic of diphtheria ravaged the small town of Nome, Alaska. The total population of the town was only around 1,400, seven of whom were dead, 19 of whom were sick, and 150 of whom were being watched closely for fear of infection. To make matters worse, the nearest source of a cure was hundreds of miles away across the dangerous Alaskan wilderness. Even the most optimistic of people wagered the town's fate was sealed. Then. A Siberian husky named Balto saved the day. At first, Balto was just one of 150 sled dogs deployed to deliver medicine to the town through gale force winds, whiteout snow, and dangerous ice. And although Balto had never stood out from the rest of the pack before, he proved to be surprisingly skillful and resilient in the last leg of the journey. Now known as the Great Race of Mercy, or the Gnome Serum Run of 1925, the race to deliver a cure to Gnome should have taken weeks, but by breaking the journey up into several stretches, a group of 20 mushers managed to reduce it to just over five days. The journey began on January 27, 1925, when 300,000 doses of antitoxin arrived in Nanana by train from Anchorage. The cargo was placed inside a metallic cylinder, then taken out into the Alaskan wilds by the first musher, Wild Bill Shannon, who arrived at the first handoff site frostbitten and having lost two of his dogs. Eventually, the cargo made its way to Leonard Zapala, who set out confidently with his 12-year-old dog, Togo, leading the pack. Togo led Zapala's pack until they reached the next musher, Charlie Olson, who then passed the serum to Gunner Kassin. But Togo no longer led the pack. Instead, Kassin completed the last leg of the journey with the quote-unquote scrub dog, Balto, as his front runner. Despite the fact that Kassin couldn't even see in the whiteout conditions and the temperatures hovered around negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, Balto pressed on, successfully leading the pack to Nome with the serum on February 2nd. Finally able to rest for the first time since the journey began, Kassin looked to Balto and said, Damn fine dog. And with that, Balto became a national hero who remains beloved nearly a century later. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. And today, we're going over the true story of Balto, the world's most heroic husky. And I say that with a <laughs> all offense intended to my dog, who's oh. a husky and not a hero. I see. Not yet. It's not, not too late. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> there could be an outbreak and he could be needed to, I don't know, Russian life saving drugs. Who knows? Zombie true, apocalypse true, or true. something. So I, I was worried when I started researching this because I remember you you mentioned that there was some controversy. There is. Around Balto. And I was like, oh man, not like, are we going to see on Twitter next to like <laughs> cancel? It's like cancel Neil Gaiman, cancel Cody Co, cancel Balto. But thankfully that's not the case. It's It's a little bit less tabloid than yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, not canceled for reasons like they were canceled. Yeah, Balto, not a problematic dog. Good dog. He was a very good dog. Yeah. There was just... Yeah, I was going to say, controversially, maybe not the most heroic husky. Maybe I'm eating my own words here. That's true. I mean, yeah. depending on who you ask, I guess. Right. We'll get into it. The story starts in January of 1925 when a horrible outbreak of diphtheria plagued the small town of Nome, Alaska. Uh I didn't know this ahead of time, but at the time, diphtheria was a major problem in America, especially among children. It was basically a respiratory disease. Apparently, in 1921 alone, more than 15,000 Americans died of the respiratory disease, Oof. which is a lot of people, not as many as the COVID-19 pandemic, but that was a worldwide pandemic. Yeah, and people didn't have like airplanes as much as we have now to like right. travel spread things right right yeah for 1921 for as like isolated as certain towns would be mm -hmm. fifteen thousand people is a lot of people especially for it to break out in nome alaska which was again we're talking like not a lot of ways to get around back then alaska is a massive massive state 
there's a reason a lot of people go missing in the Alaska Triangle every year. It is oh, yeah. huge and just pretty much all wilderness. So New Alaska is this small town with like 1,400 people. They basically had no way to treat this illness, no way to get supplies there easily, no medicine, uh, very limited capabilities to treat diphtheria. To top things off, it was a really brutal winter and the nearest town to Nome that had a train station, which would have been at the time, the fastest way to get uh, a vast quantity of medicine was Nanana, and that was nearly hmm. 700 miles away. Yeah, Quite a distance. And it's the winter, so it's, it's cold. Brutal winter, especially bad. Really strong winds, uh, complete whiteouts of snow. Not a good situation to be in. They knew it was possible to get to Nome from Nanana by sled dogs, but that trip if you had like one person start to finish would have taken several weeks to a month so mm. we're in kind of like dire straits here we have a bunch of sick people no way to get the medicine and then a group of 20 or so mushers devised a plan to basically run a relay race to get the serum to gnome in time so rather than one person taking it beginning to end they were handing off these vials of a serum mm. uh, yeah, wow. nowadays we know this is the Great Race of Mercy. Some people call it the Gnome Serum Run of uh, 1925. In either case, it was kind of their only shot here. Doesn't it affect, like, uh, children, too? The theory mostly, mostly affects children. By the time they decided to do this relay race, seven people had already died of the disease. 19 were sick, and 150 were being closely watched Basically, like, Oof. they could be infected. In a town that small, too, that's, like, a lot of people. <laughs> and it's, like, a solid 10% of the population. Yeah. Which is very concerning. And that doesn't even, you know, factor in that it might spread if they don't get a serum there in time as well. It's a very scary situation. So these mushrooms, about 20 different people, they planned out the trip from Nanana to Nome. Into, they divided it up into several smaller chunks, and at each point they would hand off the serum. At the time, <laughs> there was a blizzard coming in. Uh, temperatures mm. were dropping as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Gosh, I can't even yeah, imagine. It's brutally cold and very hard to see. And you just have a couple of guys and some dogs. And that's pretty much your last shot at survival here. Uh, they oh. set off January 27th, 1925. At the time, they had had gotten about 300,000 doses of antitoxin from Nanana, or in Nanana from Anchorage, which came by train. They wrapped those in vials, protected them in padded quilts, and then put it into a, like, a metallic cylinder to keep it safe. The first mushroom on the journey was a guy named Wild Bill Shannon. He set off on the first leg of the journey, and by the time he reached the second stop, he'd already lost two of his sled dogs, and his nose was black with frostbite. Oh, gosh. So even for someone who's like an expert... An experience. This was like a brutal journey. It was, journey. yeah. Just to paint like a picture of it. I mean, that's just the first leg of the journey. It's not even the longest leg of the journey. And already mm. this guy's lost two of his dogs and he's got a frostbitten nose. Very cold. Like, can't be over-exaggerated how cold it was. Yeah. Oof, sounds horrible. But luckily he made it. He handed it off and handed it off a few more times until it eventually reached somebody named Leonard Sapala, who was a Norwegian musher we know him now because he was Balto's trainer. Sapala, funnily enough, took over the longest and most arduous leg of the trip. He traveled 170 miles just to get the serum. And then he had to travel another 91 to meet with the next musher. Hmm. Uh, the head of his pack was a 12-year-old sled dog named Togo, who was basically like his favorite dog. Togo led the pack well to the next part of the journey. They made it the uh, last little bit. And then handed it off to another musher named Gunnar Kassen. He was going to take it 54 miles. But for some reason, I couldn't find the reason why, but Togo didn't lead the pack with him. Maybe Togo needed a break after. And maybe Togo needed a break or maybe uh, Sapala had to travel somewhere else and was going to take Togo with him because, again, that's like his lead dog. If it's a relay race, it kind of makes sense to like change dogs every. Right, right. You know, and then. But the decision to put Balto in charge was kind of a weird one. Balto was roughly half of Togo's age. He was six years old, a relatively inexperienced leader, and they, they described him as a scrub dog. So there wasn't really anything 
remarkable about Balto ahead of this journey. Hmm. But despite that, they said Balto led the pack with a surprising skill and confidence and made it that last 54 miles through negative 40 degree temperatures and whiteout conditions. Like to the point where Kasson said he couldn't even see where they were going. Yet Balto got them to Nome perfectly fine and hmm. with the serum. When they got there, Kasson was relaxing and he looked over and called Balto a quote, damn fine dog. Oh, I think this was like watched pretty closely by the national media, oh, right? Sure, yeah. So it was a huge deal. It's like on radios and stuff. Huge deal. So people saw Balto coming in at the head of the pack and he became like an overnight superstar. Everybody knew who Balto was. He became yeah. a household name. Later that year in December, they honored him with the statue in Central Park. Uh, it's still there to this day. Still the there. The inscription yep. on it reads, dedicated to the indomitable spirit of the sled dogs that relayed antitoxins 600 miles over rough ice across treacherous waters through Arctic blizzards from Nanana to the relief of stricken Nome in the winter of 1925. Mm, interesting. Because Balto ran... 54 right. miles, but the statues were like all the same right, dogs. Right, yeah. It's it's I of see, Balto, see, but it's for kind of just all of the dogs, all of the, you know, just the in commemoration of this remarkable event. That mm -hmm. said, Leonard Zapala was not unhappy, but not totally pleased with the statue, largely because he felt like the statue should have been in honor of Togo because Togo did the mm -hmm. longest stretch of the journey. Yeah, that yeah. Makes and I'm sense. sure on a personal level too. I mean, it was a twelve year a dog who's twelve years old that he's had probably had an attachment to. So I understand his sentiment. At one point, he wrote, "I hope I shall never be the man to take away credit from any dog or driver who participated in that run. We all did our best, but when the country was roused to enthusiasm over the serum run driver, I resented the statue of Balto. For if any dog deserves special mention, it was Togo." Mm. So there is an interesting fact I want to throw out okay. there. So there's a statue of there's a statue of Balto in Central Park, but they also erected a statue of Togo in Seward Park, which is also in New York. Oh. And I went to see it last weekend on a little uh, outside work field nice. trip. And I, I want to read the inscriptions. I thought it was um, a little spiky. The inscription says. In 1925, Togo led a dog sled team in blizzard conditions in Nome, Alaska, to deliver a life-saving antitoxin during a diphtheria epidemic. He traveled nearly 300 miles farther than any <laughs> other dog in the relay. <laughs> His courage saved many lives. That is really funny. That is a little, yeah, there is a little bit of like, <laughs> take the wind out of the sail. It's funny too, that, looking at the two pictures of the statues now, the one of Balto is very like, picturesque it's like yeah, he's like standing yeah. up his paws are up on like the rock but ahead of his hind feet he almost looks like he's like smiling like the way that like dogs hang their tongue out and smile the one of togo uh -huh. is like mid-run it's like an action shot right well, yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's not resting on his laurels he's like working right, really hard right. it, it almost looks like balto is like sitting there like yeah i did it. i'm getting all the credit and togo's <laughs> like got no time for yeah. it Exactly. That is really funny. Plus, the Balto statue is pretty famous, and I think if you're wandering around Central Park as a tourist, you'll probably find it. Yeah. The when I went to try to find the Togo statue, it wasn't like hard to find, but it wasn't like in, in an obvious place. I would right, say. Right. Right. Well, so, I mean, I had to wander for a little probably while. Probably generally less people in Seward Park. Also, it's a, it's a much yeah. smaller park. Yeah. Still nice yeah. that Togo got the statue. When do you know when was that erected? Um, it looks like 2001. Oh, wow. On um, that's what it says on the on the plaque. Interesting. Oh, there's a so not for a while. There's another one of Togo in Portland Spring, uh, Poland Springs, Maine, th that was erected uh, September 2022. Oh, <laughs> apparently Togo spent his <laughs> so recently spent his last years there as a stud dog. Wow, very interesting. And in 2011, Time Magazine named Togo the most heroic animal of all time. Oh, so I guess his trainer he you got know, the credit kind of got his due. Yeah. And that's yeah. the most heroic animal of all time. That's not just limited to dogs or huskies. I'm trying to think if there's any other heroic animals that would that would come to mind. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there, there's dogs we've written about on the site. Like, there's one dog who was a service dog, and it saved its blind right. owner during 9-11. Like, that was pretty there's heroic. But that was one A person. lot of dogs, typically. Though, uh, yeah. according to mygreenworld.com, the top 10 greatest animal heroes, number one, a bear saves a man from a mountain lion. <laughs> but the bear wasn't like, I'm going <laughs> right. to save him. He was, was like, just like, ooh, a lion. It's totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
Yeah, uh, I, I don't know of any stories of like an elephant saving a drowning man or anything like that. Yeah, it's mostly like cats or dogs sometimes like wake up their owners if there's a fire or something. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. And there was uh, not really a hero, but like that really nice story of Hachiko, the Japanese dog who would wait oh. for his owner every single day at Shibuya Station. Yeah, yeah. even after the owner died. Yeah. yeah, for like years after the owner's death. So, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of stories about dogs. I mean, dog, they're, you know, they're man's best friend for a reason. They're very loyal animals. Yeah, yeah. I think some cats have, like, roused people. Yeah, yeah. When needed. But yeah, you don't ever really hear of, like, someone's circus monkey, like, saving people because they were always horribly mistreated. So, like. Right, yeah. I see, like, even, like, maybe a, a horse at some point might have done something. I can see a horse, yeah. I mean, there's movies about famous horses. yeah. Well, there are, but there, I'm think, I was thinking it's like mostly like ra- like race horses or race horses are like war horses. The black stallion yeah. is the first one that I'm thinking of, or war horse, the movie War Horse. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if that's based on anything uh, historical though. Yeah, I think dogs are probably the most rogue animals, and I guess Togo is the most rogue dog. So yeah, so props yeah, to Togo. Proxy, the most heroic animal. Mm-hmm. Copenhagen, a 15 hand high stallion who carried the Duke of Wellington for 17 hours during the Battle of Waterloo. I was pretty heroic, but he's also kind of forced into it. I was gonna say he's just doing yeah. his job, but like so was Togo. So was Togo and Balto. They were just doing their jobs. Yeah, I guess the difference is like they were delivering medicine, so it's. In, in like, mm-hmm. really rough conditions. Yeah, I mean, Waterloo is probably pretty yeah, rough. Yeah, true. Well, fair. <laughs> to conclude Balto's story, after the relay, he lived another eight years. He died at the age of 14 in 1933. His body was preserved at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and it's still there to this day. I've actually seen it. I've been oh, to wow. the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. Oh, yeah, no shout kidding. out Cleveland. As somebody from Pittsburgh, I hear a lot of bad things about Cleveland. <laughs> Most of it probably has to do with the Cleveland Browns versus the Steelers. Um, mm. I know a couple of people from Cleveland, maybe, you know, 20 or so years ago, it wasn't that good. Cleveland today is great. I've gone there for concerts. The like downtown has a lot of like nice breweries and bookshops. And the museum, the Natural History Museum, and the Art Museum are both free. You don't have to pay to get in, mm. which is really nice. Wow. I'm also a huge Cleveland fan. I went to school in Ohio. One of my best friends lives in Cleveland, and it's just a beautiful city. It's on the water. It's old and cool and uh, lots to do. Breweries, like you said. Great Lakes is like my favorite. Yeah, Yeah, Great Lakes. Very good. Brewery, actually. Very good. And you can't get it in New York, or I can't find it in New York. We've talked about this before. Yeah, everywhere here. I can find it It makes no sense to me. Why wouldn't I be able to get that beer Next time I go to New York, I'll just bring you a case of Great Lakes. Yeah, that'd be great. I can do that. But yeah, that uh, is Balto's story. Yeah. Very, you know, I mean, it's it's very famous, right? They made the movie, the animated movie, 1995. There's been live action ones as well. Um, there I th- have? <laughs> I think so. I'm pretty sure unless I'm hallucinating that. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm only seeing the animated one. I'm just imagining how they would do that, I guess. Uh, apparently, I'm, re- I'm predicting the future. There was a one announced. Oh, uh, for 2025, a live action animation hybrid film based on the 1995 animated film. They also did a Balto 2, a sequel to that movie, which I don't know what happens in that. <laughs> what's, what's that movie about? <laughs> That's what I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he goes to New York and he like sees his statue and it's like Balto in the big Balto city. 2 Wolf Quest. I think it's like a, I don't know. It's, I think they just kind of started making stuff up. It's about Balto's daughter. Oh. Balto's daughter, Al- Alu, fears she'll never be accepted because she looks more like a wolf than a dog and runs away from home to go on an epic journey of adventure and self-discovery. And then there's Balto <laughs> 3, Winds of Change. Oh, there's a third one? There oh, is. So they kind of milked it. So yeah, I guess an upcoming Balto movie. But there was a live action film with, is that Willem Dafoe? 2019, a movie called Togo. Oh. And yeah, starring Willem Dafoe. I've never heard of this. I mean, either. But, well, there's a new movie to watch if anyone's looking for one. It's on Disney Plus, apparently. <laughs> Not sponsored. It sounds like there's a couple if you're into Balto content. Right? Yeah. Well, I think I want to say most people have seen the 1995 one. I would think so. It's a pretty big 
popular movie. I mean, as a kid growing up in the late 90s, you and I have definitely seen it. Yeah, I, I saw it. I don't remember much about it, Me but I, I'm sure I saw it. I never saw two or three. I never even knew they made Togo. Apparently, it's very well reviewed. 90, nine, oh, 92% great. on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, yeah, Willem Dafoe, and I don't recognize anybody else in it, but that's fine. Togo's getting his due. He's getting his due. It looks like a good movie. So there you cool. go. If anyone's interested in Togo's story, it's <laughs> there for you on Disney+. Plus. Togo is a good name uh, for a dog still, I It think. is a really good name, especially for a race dog or like a sled dog. Yeah. 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 Like a husky yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Ours is named Laszlo because he used to bite a lot. Oh. There's a vampire in uh, what we do in the shadows named Laszlo. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm reading Dracula right now and it's fantastic. Oh, nice. Speaking of vampires. Dracula is a very good book. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Are you going to see the Nosferatu movie coming out later this year? Oh, I didn't know there was yeah, one. Yeah, a remake from uh, Robert Edgers who did The Witch and The Northman and The Lighthouse. Oh, I see. I probably won't see the movie, but... You never know. On, Sometimes it's I'm just a Christmas movie. Yeah. It comes out on Christmas. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for listening to this episode of History Uncovered. Hope you all enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit shorter this time around, but an interesting story, I think, the true story of Balto. Kind of the true story of Togo, yeah. also, to you know, share the credit. That's true. That's true. Two for one, kind of. Yeah. And if you want to read more about the famous dogs and other famous dogs and other famous animals and people and events, you can do that. It's all at all that's interesting dot com. Uh, if you want mm-hmm. to become a member, you can go to all that's interesting dot com slash membership. That'll get you some extra perks on the website. Uh, no ads, a dark reader mode and access to a little bit more history uncovered where we're going to be talking, we're going to be doing our, you know, monthly history happy hour section uh, over there for members only. So if you're interested in hearing that, yeah, including right yeah. now, if you're interested in hearing that, it's only $5 a month um, and it supports us and helps us out, lets us know that we're doing a good job, as does giving us a nice little five star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on yeah that's always nice as well and as always you can reach out to us if you want to you can leave us a voicemail at 929-526-3029 we do listen to those and those are great or you can send us an email at podcast at all is interesting yeah we've gotten some really good emails recently uh things that have like you know corrected us we always appreciate being historically accurate so it's nice when we get something wrong that people are willing to point that out um, yeah yeah corrections um questions episode suggestions yeah, yeah. Uh, we love we love hearing from people so so definitely call or or email yeah and you can check us out on social media as well uh we're on instagram at history uncovered podcast on tiktok at real history uncovered and uh you might be listening to this on youtube but if you're not we're on youtube as well history uncovered over on YouTube. And if you want to stay up to date with any stories that we're publishing on allitsinteresting.com, which we are doing literally every single day, <laughs> uh, you can go to allitsinteresting.com slash sign up to sign up for our newsletter. That way you never miss a story. It'll be sent directly to your inbox. And I guess next, the next story, I believe, or next episode is going to be Nixon's resignation. Oh, fun. Yeah, because that happened, um, I think it's the 50th anniversary in August. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. 74. Um, So, yeah, we're going to get into that and talk about why he resigned, how he resigned, um, what happened before and after his resignation. And it's going to be an interesting episode, as always. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Uh, Cool. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening once again, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. (laughs) 